Hello friends, it's Shan here. Welcome or welcome back to Golf with Shan. In today's video, we are going to be unboxing my very first putting mat. I am so excited. As you can see, I am back in Canada. It's snowing outside and I do have a few more videos to upload from Asia, but I wanted to get this video out in case you guys are still thinking of Christmas shopping for, you know, someone you know who golfs, maybe yourself, family, friend. Whoever it is, I wanted to share my new putting mat with you guys. It's not a sponsored or partnership video. I bought this putting mat off of Amazon during the Black Friday sale. And yeah, I'm excited to unbox it for you guys. You guys will see my first impressions. And after I unbox it, I am also going to be sharing a few drills that I will be using to hopefully improve my putting stroke come the next golf season or the next time I get out of here. Welcome to the floor of my study. This is the only space I can think of to unroll a putting mat. I actually wanted to buy a bigger putting mat, but I live in a building and uh, I don't have enough space for that. <laughs> Let's unbox this. Okay, so, I don't know if you guys can see. Here's the box. This is what it looks like unrolled. Well, this is what it should look like. I am so excited guys. They have more expensive versions of this with like a wooden sideboard, but I just went with this one because I think it's decent enough. Let's open it. Gotta clear this out though. There we go. Here's the top. Something that comes to mind is you have this like track for the ball to come back but it is detachable. So my boyfriend and I are both gonna be using this. He is left-handed because he used to play hockey left-handed. This is like obviously designed for someone who is right-handed as majority of people are, but if you are left-handed, you can remove these traps and you can stand on the other side and still use this putty mat. Comes with three golf balls, no brand names, five of these track attachments, if you guys can see. So this is three meters long. I don't have three meters in here, but we're just gonna stretch it out as far as I can. Okay, so if you're attaching this, this little like loop-de area goes to the first attachment and then it just hooks on behind it. Like LOL, that's the reality of uh not having enough space. Okay, so quick story time about how these putting drills came to be because I think it's kind of interesting. So some of you have been following my channel for a while. You know that earlier this year I was in China and I had to do the hotel quarantine for 21 days. That's a long time to be stuck in a little box. All I had was my golf clubs. I had my full set of golf clubs with me and then my family friend who are so incredibly nice, they sent me a yoga mat and they sent me a yoga mat that was flat. So if you have a yoga mat that's not like raised with the little bumps, if you have a flat yoga mat, you can do this as well. I was putting in my hotel room on the yoga mat and I would just put shoes around the front and so when my ball goes over there, it doesn't like roll off the yoga mat onto the wood floor. Something that you guys can do. I've also put on my carpet in my living room. I'm sure I'm not the only one who does this. I feel like every golfer is just like putting around their house and chipping into things. So that's how I started using these putting drills. Again, I am not claiming that I'm the first person to do this. All of these putting drills are based on really popular ones, but I just wanted to share this story with you guys because it all started with me locked up with a yoga mat. I am also officially switching to the PXG Bat Attack putter that I got with my full bag of PXG golf clubs. Some of you have noticed that I didn't switch to putter, so I was still using my old Ping Crazy putter. And the reason for that is because I did really like the feel of that putter, and I didn't want to make too much changes right before a big golf trip. And so now that putter, the grip is like going out it's shedding on itself, so either I change the grip or I just start using my new putter. You guys have also mentioned that, you know, like putting I know is not the strongest part of my golf game, but the problem is not the putter. The problem is me. <laughs> and that is why we have a putting mat. And I do actually really like the feel of this putter. From now on, while I have some time and I can't golf outside, because like I said, it's snowing outside, I am going to get used to putting with this putter getting my putting stroke, you know, nice and square, hitting the center of the club face, and all of that, let's get started. All right, so I got three drills for you guys. You are going to need 
four golf balls. So this set comes with three no brand balls. And then I just grabbed a Titleist with a line because I like lining up my putts, even in practice. So four golf balls, one with a line, and then a notebook. So I have a book that's about half a centimeter to a centimeter in depth. This is my planner for the new year. We're going to be using this on the third drill. The first one is three balls in a row. Let me demonstrate. So I'm going to use the center line here because it's visually the easiest for you guys to see. So I'm going to line up this ball straight down the center line. I'm going to put the middle of the club face. This is where you want to hit it. The, the nice thing about most putters is they have a line and a dot telling you where the middle of the putter is. So we're going to line that up and then we're going to put one ball on top and one ball on the bottom. Make sure that between these two balls is enough space for your putter head to go through but not too much space. So just enough space where it forces you on your putting stroke to hit the center of the club face without nicking either of the balls. You can use different things. This is the first row. Just three balls in a row. Very simple. And we're going to go back and through. And the goal here is to not hit the top or the bottom ball. Drill number two. So using these same two balls, we're going to line up this one in the center again. I'm going to take one more ball, so we have three here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these two on the top line. So then you see there's three balls on top in a straight line towards the target and then the ball that I'm going to hit. The reason I do this is because one of the most common mistakes for myself and also I think for golfers in general is they will cut across the ball either outside in or inside out causing the ball to have a side spin. And for putting we want the ball to roll straight on our line. Having this barrier up top prevents me from coming in outside in or coming inside out. It forces my club to always stay on this side of this barrier. And naturally speaking, your putting stroke will have a bit of an arch going inside around your body because that's just how physics works. And so, yeah, I like doing this. It just creates a little visual barrier so that I don't cut across the ball. I like this little ball retriever track thing. Notice that these balls are like very close to the top of my putter, so I don't have them all the way out here. That doesn't really work as a visual barrier. I hit that one too hard. I'm trying to like keep it in frame. That's why I'm so close to the hole. I would probably practice down there, but moving on to drill number three. This is gonna be our last one, and I love doing this one. I think it's great for especially new golfers, beginner golfers. This is when we're going to take our notebook. So again, take a very thin notebook. Don't grab like your thick book or grab something that's about like half a centimeter to a centimeter in thickness and we're going to place it flat. Let's do the first one. So let's do this. We're going to put this book right behind where you're going to hit the ball. And why did I start doing this? I started doing this because I realized that I'm not hitting the top half of the golf ball. This is not something that I came up with. I, I watched some YouTube videos of people that are much better at golf than me. And they said that you almost want to create a top spin on the ball so that the ball rolls straight forward. And to do that, you don't want to hit the ground on your putt. A lot of new golfers on their putting stroke, they will hit the ground as they hit the ball and you want the putter to hover a little bit. So you want the putter to be just slightly off the ground so that when you make impact with the ball, you can create that top spin going forward on your line. I'm not the expert, this is what I saw on the internet and this actually helps me a lot with making proper contact with the ball. Alright, so that is my new putting mat and the three drills I wanted to share with you guys. If you've never heard of these drills before, which I doubt, give them a try. Let me know 
how it works for you, especially the one with the little notebook. That one's probably my favorite out of the three. I think it really helps with me to naturally, you know, do the hover and to make sure I make impact with the center of the club face and slightly up on the ball instead of the bottom so that I get that nice forward roll motion and no side spin. In terms of my first impressions on the putting mat, I don't really like the ridges, but I know that will go away with time if I just leave it out, put some heavy things on where the folds were when it was in the box, I'm sure it'll flatten out. This putting mat, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. I think it's good for what it is. It's definitely on the lower end in price range and it fits kind of in, you know, where I'm living. Overall, 7 out of 10. I'm sure as the ridges flatten out, I will be using it, you know, every single day. Whenever I have some time, I'm bored, I'm going to be practicing. One more thing before I end the video is that I am also going to be playing around with my putting grip. This is also something that I wanted to do, but I didn't want to make drastic changes before a golf trip. So now that I am here, I'm going to share with you guys what I plan to do. As you can see, I've been gripping it like normal, except not the interlock. This is how I grip my other clubs, but for putter, I just overlap. And this is what I've been doing. But when I was a junior, so when I played in tournaments in high school and when I played in OFSA, I actually putted cross-handed. So I'm right-handed and I would have my left hand at the bottom and my right hand. And I would putt cross-handed like this. This is a very popular thing to do and it honestly helps with me cutting across the ball. It helps eliminate my right hand power. My right hand is the reason that sometimes the club face doesn't come in center. Having the cross hand is actually probably a really good idea and I want to try it. The reason that I've been hesitant to do it again is because I find that I don't get as good control of speed and distance with the cross hand because my left hand is the weaker hand, I'm right handed and so sometimes I don't know how hard to hit using my left hand and the back of my hand as the guide but now that I have some time I'm going to work on it maybe next golf season you guys are going to see me putt cross handed I am also going to try out some other ones since I have time a common one is the claw grip where you hold it normal except you turn this hand over so you make like an L shape and then you flatten that out and then you kind of just do this. That also is another way of taking out your dominant hand of, you know, rotating the club face. The goal here is you want to use the back of your left hand as you're guiding and you're just going to hit flat towards your target with the back of your left hand or your if you're left-handed then right hand. Your non-dominant hand is going to be your leading and that's just going to keep your hand really steady especially for shorter putts. Those are things that I'm going to be working on. Those are drills that I'm going to be using. This is my new putting mat. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. If you haven't subscribed yet, you know, consider subscribing to this channel. I have a lot of golf and hopefully travel content again for you guys. Thank you for watching. I will see you in my next video. Bye! Welcome to my entryway. Here it is, full length in all its glory. So I did notice that in my study I had it on a carpet. The bottom of this is this like rubbery, so it does grip better when you have a smooth surface. I think these are like laminated wood. So on here it does sit more flat, and you can really push it down. It does grip a lot better and it's a lot smoother. That's something to note, maybe put it on a flat surface. <laughs> This is the only place I can think of that can extend the full length of this. I think I'm just going to leave it here so that whenever someone comes to my place, they have to make a putt first before entering. <laughs> okay, bye.